When we look at rates of return, we're interested in returns over a particular period. So over a given period from the beginning of the period to the end of that period. We're going to start by talking about total dollar return. And that is the change in wealth as measured in dollar terms associated with a particular asset. So if we have a bond at the beginning of the period, what's our wealth associated with that? At the end of the period, what's our wealth associated with that bond at the end of the period? And the difference is our total dollar return. Well, there's two components that drive the total dollar return. The first, cash flows from the investment, the cash flows from the bond. And again, we're interested in during that period. And for a bond, it's going to be the coupons. So how much coupons got paid during the period? And you can imagine at the end of the period, we've got some money in our pocket that we didn't have at the beginning. And the reason it's in our pocket is because of this bond. It's the coupon. We want to take that into account. Second thing that we want to take into is the change in the value of the investment. It's often called the capital gain. And it's just the ending value minus the initial value. It captures the change in the value. So for example, suppose at the beginning of our period, our bond had a value of $950. And at the end of the period, it had a value of $960. You can see at the beginning of the period, we had something that was worth $950. At the end, it's worth $10 more. We're $10 richer. So the total dollar return is just the sum of the cash flows from the investment plus the capital gain. So in our little example, suppose it had paid a coupon of $40. So here we are at the beginning with a piece of paper worth $950 at the end with a piece of paper worth 960 and a coupon of $40 in our pocket we're $50 richer our total dollar return is $50 what's often most useful is to look at percentage return which is the total dollar return scaled by the value at the beginning of the period and so it captures your return in percentage terms and so all it is is the total dollar return divided by the initial value. So here we are, we have a period, and we have a total dollar return over this period. Scale it by the value of the asset, in our case the value of the bond, at the beginning of the period. And let me just go back real quick. One of the things that we can back out because of this relationship is because the percentage return equals the total dollar over the initial price. If you multiply both sides by the initial price, that if you know the percentage return and you multiply it by the initial price, you actually get the total dollar return. So basically, if you have a return of, let's say, 10%, at the beginning of the period, the price of the bond is $900. 0.10 times 900, that meant you got $90 in total dollar return over the period. A couple of notes. Uh, we've talked about dollar return and we've also talked about percentage return. If you have a case where it just says return or rate of return, it's percentage return. That's a return we deal with all class, all course. The only time we deal with total dollar return is if it's specified dollar return. Also, all cash flows that take place during a period, we'll treat them as taking place at the end of the period. So again, the problems are pretty much universally set up so that the coupon payments actually take place here at the end of the period. But if for some reason there's a coupon in the middle of the period, just assume it happens at the end of the period. It allows for discounting uh, to be consistent. Um, but most of the problems, I believe all the problems, are set up so that everything happens at the end of the period. So let's take an example. You bought a bond for 930 one year ago. Well, if you bought it for 930, it meant a year ago the price was 930. You just received a coupon of $80. So you got a coupon of $80. And you can sell the bond for 940 today. So the price is 940 today. And so notice in our timeline, we're so used to today being time zero, but in here, today is time one, because the earlier point in time, which is one year ago, is time zero. So the question is, what is the total dollar return over this period? Well, at the end of the period, you can see 
we have an $80 coupon in our pocket. We also have a piece of paper today that's worth $9.40 that a year ago was worth $9.30, so it's worth $10 more. So what's our total dollar return? $90. And what is the percentage return? Well, it's simply the 90 that we got over this period divided by the 930, which was the price at the beginning of the period, and so it's 9.68%. And again, notice that if we have, oops, it's yellow, it's not going to be visible. Notice if we had something worth $930 and we had a percentage return of 968 then that means that our total dollar return 90 which is what we get. So in order to find the rate of return you really only need three things. You need the cash flow from the investment which is coupons. You need the bond value at the end of the period which is the ending value and the bond value at the beginning of the period which is the initial value. So you get the coupons for the cash flow you can get ending value and initial value to get the capital gain, and then you need to just scale it by the initial value in order to get the percentage return. So again, cash flow plus capital gain, all divided by the initial value. So we're about to do a problem that involves, you know, a lot of the things that we've covered in bonds, but focus on if I want the return over a period, the coupons over that period the ending value and the initial value of the bond. So here's our example and there's a lot but we can work it out. Rate of return over the past year which is from one year ago to today for a bond with a coupon rate of 10 percent it's got a face value of a thousand pays annual coupons the next one is expected in 12 months, which means one just got paid. One year ago, the bond had a yield of 12% and three years until maturity. And today, it has a yield to maturity of 11%. So that's a lot of information. We want to know what the rate of return is, so it's the percentage return. So we got to get the cash flows from the investment over the period. So how many coupons got paid over the period? And what, you know, what were they in dollar amounts? what was the value of the bond at the end of the period minus the value at the initial so we can get at the beginning of the period so we can get capital gain all divided by the initial value. So I like this timeline because it lays out everything we want to get. We want to get the rate of return during that in that box. So here we are today, here we are one year ago and a coupon just got paid so it got paid at the end of this period and I it's written in there as $100. How do we know it's $100? Because you have a coupon rate of 10%, face value of 1,000 with annual coupons. So it's just 0 0.10 times 1,000. Capital gain, we got to get the price at the beginning of the period. So that was one year ago. And look at our information. One year ago, the bond had a yield of 12 and three years until maturity. So here we were with a bond that had one year to maturity, two years to maturity, three years to maturity, and a yield of 12%. And we can price the bond at that point in time. Then we need to know the price at the end of the period, which is the price today. And so we know that it had a yield of 11% because we're given that. But notice, if we're getting the price today, it only has, so here we are today, one, two periods left. So if a year ago, you've got to be careful reading it, a year ago it had three years until maturity, then today it has two years to maturity. So all we need to do is, you know, find the coupon, the cash flow from investment, which you've already spotted as 100, value the bonds at those two points in time, put it all together, and we've got the rate of return. So again, the coupon is 100 bucks, one coupon, 10% of 1,000 is 100. What was the initial price? What was the price one year ago? Well, we've already talked about this. N is 3. There were 3 years to maturity, and this is an annual bond. I percent is the yield to maturity. That's given as 12. The payment is 100. We know that they're $100 coupons. We just talked about it a couple of times. 
FV is a thousand, we're in end mode, next payment in one year. And one year ago, when this was all the case, the value of the bond was $951.96. That's the initial value. So the only thing left is the ending value. And so there's a couple of things that aren't going to change. What are they? End mode and FV is going to be a thousand and the coupon is going to be a hundred because the, even if we jump forward a year then the hundred dollars or the coupon that was due in a year or in a period just got paid so the next one's still in one period the coupons stay the same and the FVs they stay the same the par doesn't change the coupons don't change what does change for sure what changes is the number of periods until maturity because we're looking at it at a different point in time if we have a period here then however you know whatever n is here this one's always going to be you know that n minus one that we're one period closer to maturity so that'll always change it'll go down by one and the other thing that can change no guarantees in this case it does because we're told is the yield to maturity no reason why the yield to maturity can't be the same at two points in time no reason why it can't be different in this case it's different it went from 12 percent to 11 percent so now we're just finding the value of a bond that matures in two periods has a yield to maturity of 11 pays a hundred dollar coupons par of a thousand so what we're really finding is a hundred over 1.11 plus a hundred over 1.11 squared plus a thousand over 1.11 squared and we do that we get 982.87. So now we can put it all together. We know that we made $100 in a coupon, and we know that our bond was worth 951.96. Now it's worth 982.87. So again, our percentage return is the $100 coupon plus the capital gain, which is an increase of about $30, all scaled by the initial value. So, you know, here we have our period, and we got 100 here, and the price of the bond went from 951.96 to 982.87. So we figure out our change with the left-hand side of the uh, numerator, divide by the denominator, which is the value at the beginning of the period 951.96 and so we can see that we had a capital gain of thirty dollars and ninety one cents we had a coupon of a hundred so our total dollar return over the period was hundred and thirty dollars and ninety one cents divided by the value at the beginning of the period and we can see that our return over this period was thirteen point seven five percent that was the rate of return over the past year for the bond that had those conditions and those characteristics at those points in time.